dispose of the award-winning talking point. Steven Chair, everybody, do you think you could take on Steven Lim? I heard that you can say on air. Do you ever get like the giggles? Uh? That one I think is more just you. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> International Fried Chicken Day is right around the corner and so today we have an extremely unique guest here with us. It's the next bright star of McDonald's, the all-new Chicken McCrispy Signature! Woo! Welcome, welcome to the show! Right. It's nice to meet you too. You know, you actually look kind of familiar. Oh, oh so you're non-spicy, Ooh. not to be confused with the Chicken McCrispy Spicy. Oh. Uh, I don't mean to be rude, but I just want to say, wow, you look juicy. And extra crispy. Wow, getting hungry, sir. Oh. oh, what's this? Hey, you brought us a surprise. Whoa, so you're saying we can get the six piece chicken and crispy for $10, usual price $18.95, from 2nd to 4th July? Oi, you forgot to mention that this promo is applicable for all flavors signature, spicy, and mixed. Whoa, this, this is the best guess ever! Best guess Whoa. ever! It's time for a new crispy OG. Get your chicken and crispy today! Ladies and gentlemen, we have a broadcast media veteran in our presence today. The man I personally regard as the face of China News Asia, even though he would most likely modestly disagree. He is the host of the award-winning Talking Point, podcast host of Deep Dive, the man who puts his body on the line for your <laughs> entertainment. Stephen Chai, everybody. Yeah! Thank you, thank you, thank you very Welcome much. Welcome to the show. So before we deep dive into your life, career and expertise, I wanted ah. to start off with some boliao questions. Sure, sure. We have a Telegram community. Yeah. Join if you haven't. We told them that you'll be on. They were very excited. They contributed quite a lot of questions okay. and we picked about four or five that uh, you hopefully address. Some of them I'll are try. really, really bully out. <laughs> Starting with the first, if there was a battle of the Stevens in Singapore, right? <laughs> do you think you could take on Stephen Lim? Hey, Stephen Koko, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> a take on? Uh, in, yeah. As in a physical fist fight? Most sure. likely. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I was not expecting no, that. No, no, no. I'm saying as in I can take him on. Will I win or lose? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very non confrontational, non violent kind of guy. The only time I ever uh, got punched was in primary school because uh, my, my friend and I we were sitting there, we we're waiting for something, and we very boliao, and we're like, Hey, you ever been punched before? He's like, no. Oh, no, no that's God. your only fight in your so life. We that's not your life. life. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, it's painful. He's like, yeah, man. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're so wholesome, man. Yes. <laughs> and that's when you found out pacifism was going on. Exactly. <laughs> yep, I don't like this feeling. Okay, a community member wanted to know what, what did you study? Oh, not very much actually, but. <laughs> <laughs> What did I say? I did a, a communications degree oh, at university. Yeah, okay, but not because I planned to be a journalist. What was the plan? I wanted to be an actor. Oh, uh, which you did, right? I mean, not really, not as a profession. Uh, I did act in a, a pilot once. Right. Oh. Yeah, but it never came to air. You know, in MediaCorp? Right. In MediaCorp, yeah. I was like the scholar in some ministry working in some civil <laughs> service department, that kind of thing. Like, you know. So your, your profession was a surprise to your family? Uh, not entirely. I mean, I, I did dabble in the media. I did get interested, started making videos and things like that, you know. Uh, but to talk for a living, I never thought I'd be doing this. So then yeah. what influenced you to, to enter the, the industry? Just by chance. Years ago, there was a channel called Spot City. Do you know there was a dedicated sports channel in Singapore? By Mediacorp and it was a TCS, TCS. at the time. Yeah. yeah. So they were looking for hosts and I was working at ESPN Star Sports at the time. And I said, okay, I put, I wrote in, tried, and I got a, a part-time gig doing that. The, the other thing that people <laughs> noted also is that your broadcast voice is very, very smooth. Was this something that you learned how to do or you were just naturally born oh. with it? Where yeah. is this accent from? Accent? Yeah. What accent? You have a very uh, refined English oh. Almost American English accent. No lah. I can speak like that also one if you want. That I can be less refined. Is it just the same? Is it just the same? You think that sounds casual? 
Yeah. I mean, if you want, I can also speak broken English. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, break, I break the English for you. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. That's, <laughs> all right. That's all right. I never had any real formal training, you know, and I think this is one of those areas where the more you do, the better you get. It's like practice. I was a radio DJ in my early years for Symphony 92.4, oh, oh, you know, the classical music yeah. sca- station. And I used to have to pronounce all these foreign names. I had no idea what they were. We had a whole right. file for pronunciation. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you just try. And then when you realize, when you fail, then you just try harder. And, you know, yeah. so over time, I think I, I got better. How but, was it like uh, being a symphony music DJ? I, I would imagine in 97 when they play the pop music, right? Then in between, in between yeah. their conversations, when the music play, they'd be grooving. Yeah. Yeah. What you be doing? Classical music. I'll put it this way. This was in the era when we had to change CDs. <gasps> so there were two CD oh players on the open, put in track five, pause. <laughs> <laughs> then when that was over, and that was coming up next. Play. <laughs> wow. So he was Singapore Back. Steve Aoki. Eh? <laughs> wow. I would think it's a time where, where the level of English presentation was not at that level. In, yeah, it's true. In, like big fish and small pond, right? Mm. So now when we get our new guys, they have to go through a lot more formalized training. But when mm. I came in, uh, again, there was no training. In fact, my first day on CNA was just, wow. It was tough. It was sink or swim. Right. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm sure I messed up in so many ways. He didn't. I'm pretty sure he didn't. I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, speaking of which, like in, in your eight years there, were there any like major cock-ups or like mistakes that you think you made? Like a Steve Harvey I, moment. Yeah. yeah. Because it's news, it's a live show, uh, it's quite natural. So there were times when, I think last time again, we had to physically pass scripts, you know, someone, the, the uncle wow. will print it and he'll bring it to me and pass mm. it to me in the commercial break. But one time he just walked in when we were live on air. I was just like, oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, our cameras were cut back to us earlier than we expected. And right. you know, mm. you're like, you're eating or you're doing something else yeah, that yeah, you shouldn't yeah, be yeah, doing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So those are the kind of moments. Do you ever get like the giggles? Uh? <laughs> oh, I had a laughing fit once. Just <laughs> yeah, I laugh. can't remember what it was about, but you just laugh. And then you just like, Probably and then you got to read a really serious like, and so over in... <laughs> So then luckily it was a picture of something else, you know, but there you are like, like right. so so it does happen. And then right. once you start, your calls will start <laughs> and once you're both yeah. on, that's it. Oh. And there's no there's no cure la. Just you just hide it out. It will just yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and he will just randomly come back and haunt you and, and yeah. trigger you. He's trying sometimes. to find out for his yeah, oh, no, because no, he no, can no, get no, all no, the time fits. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That one I think is more just you. Steven got deep. Oh, Sorry, bro. <laughs> so I think like now most people uh, remember you and know you for Talking Point. Yeah. It's uh, been such a successful show. It's uh, won Thank awards. You. What was the conceptualization like? Was it something that you were told to do or something that you pitched or pitched to you? The show has been around for many years, even before I started hosting it. And when I first took it over, this is what we were doing. Panel discussions. Right. It was yeah. a live call in, a one hour show. You can pick up your phone, call in and say, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. And yeah. give your thoughts oh, or opinions okay. on a certain issue. So I would get, you know, uh, people calling in and say, hello, I'm Mr. Lim, you know, I am 65 years old this year and I want to tell you uh, about Facebook So that was how it began. And then the shape it is today actually is quite by chance. So um, one of the episodes that really kicked it off was the bubble tea experiment, mm, yeah. which I think a lot of people remember. So I basically drank bubble tea for a period of time, uh, you know, and we were just working on the show. We didn't have any intention or didn't know how it would play out. Mm. But people liked it so much that we thought, hey, this experiment thing works. Were you in on it? Were you part of the planning process? Well, of, of course, of course. Okay, so okay. they asked me first, Are you okay, you drink bubble tea for, I, I can't remember, was it one month or something? Then I did my research. <laughs> people getting clogged with pearls in their system or don't know what, all these <laughs> horror stories. So I was like, huh. and I don't like bubble tea. So I was a bit hesitant, but then after a while, I was like, okay. After that, same thing with every experiment, they will always ask me first, are you comfortable doing this? Right. But it's not so much you suggested, why don't I just eat nothing Sometimes I suggest. I mean, there's a team effort with all the right. ideas. We get a lot of viewers writing in saying, hey, can you investigate this? And then we'll do some <laughs> At research. At what cost? <laughs> I mean, if we think it's interesting, we'll do it, you know? Is there something that you thought was really interesting, but you just couldn't do it? So far, no, so far we've managed to, if, if, if I think, if any of us really feel that there's a topic that's, you know, really close to our heart, and if we can find enough evidence to warrant making it into a show, we've been able to do it. How about like most meaningful or favorite episode? Oh, wow. There's so many. Um, 
one of them was the Thai cave boys, you know, when they were stuck. Yeah. Yeah. So we went over to cover the story, but went angle, over, we went to Thailand, oh, yeah, okay. to the, the, the city itself. But our angle was more, where are these boys from? What are their families like? So I went to visit their homes, speak to their relatives, you know, and oh, wow. find out, try and find out a bit more about their upbringing. One interview we did with one of the grandmothers, we went to her house and she didn't want to speak to us. She was... The local crew came, you know, they were quite a bit aggressive and she shooed them away, they left. So, she, but she said, okay, you can film in his room, film mm. his, yeah. So we hung out, uh, I was talking to her and then suddenly I realized, I think she's opened up and she's willing to talk. So I just um, signaled to my cameraman and said, hey. So they just quietly came and that became the interview. Right. Mm. So there are some moments like that when you feel like, you know, wow, I, I'm getting something special out of this person yeah. here, you know. Actually, at that point, were the boys rescued yet? No. Wow. Nobody wow. knew what was going on. Even when we left the country, wow. they were still in the cave. Yeah. Right. But, but we had been there like 10 days already, we, you know, we didn't mm. know what was going to happen. And when yeah. you talk about your team, like, how big is your, your oh, team? Yeah, it sounds so big, right? Yeah. <laughs> Did we meet the whole team just now? No, almost, almost. Okay, oh, okay. One third of the yeah. team. Oh, uh, wow. We have about five, six producers. Okay. And another about three or four assistant producers. Each episode is managed by one producer and one assistant producer. There are different hosts. There are actually four of us four, hosting right? Talking mm. Point. Yeah. Mm. But you know why you see me the most? You're more willing you're to very put free. your body in the line. <laughs> 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 you're you're very free. Free. <laughs> your power rate is the lowest. <laughs> <laughs> you're close, you're close. Oh no! Oh, no. They pay no. you by the <laughs> project. No, I'm full-time staff. Oh. Uh, so I'm paid Wait. a monthly salary. Whether you use me one time or 10 times, I'm right. paid the same. Okay, okay. <laughs> you started at a time, like, I would say maybe pre-social media, like when you were in front oh, of the yeah. camera. And then now your show is getting millions of views on <clears> social media. Like how has quote unquote like fame changed? Like I'm, I'm guessing last oh. time it was like the worst that could happen is someone writing a letter to complain. But now it's like immediate hate <laughs> comments. Uh, I have some strange letters. I don't know if I call them stalkers, but some interesting uh, fans who would, yeah, told me I was, I don't know, born in a different country with different parents. And anyway. Whoa, <laughs> you got <yeah>. Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Obama. No, 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 no. Someone who was writing me letters uh, telling Telling me, saying that my life is not what I think it is. Oh, oh. Yeah, this was before there was email. So she used to okay. physically send yeah. letters, you know. But it was out of affection or it was written yeah, in why is it? blood. So your life is not what you think it is. No, no, she was saying is. that I, my parents, the people that I think are my parents are not my real parents. Oh. I was born in, oh, I don't know where, some other part of the world. And actually <laughs> uh, there was a whole like conspiracy theory. Your parents right. never knew of this letter. Like. No, no, I didn't. didn't yeah, come I didn't, I didn't. Uh, it only got to the point once where I, <laughs> I did have to go to security because it was, it was becoming a bit more frequent. And I said, can I, can you pull up the CCTV camera? Can we see who is this person yeah. that is oh dropping off God. the, you know? Oh, they don't, oh, they don't, they don't mail the letter. They really no, go because, down to the yeah, office. Yeah, because and at like, the time, wow. you know. Yeah, uh, right. Sometimes it was mailed, but then, yeah. So just, I just did, just, can I just take a screen capture just in case anything happens to me? So, yeah. so you all know, okay? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I think it was just like, how how has that that public interaction changed oh, okay. over time? I mean, you can't have everyone like you. There'll always mm. be people that don't like you. Mm. But I think I'm quite, okay, uh, people that come to me are generally all really nice. You know, yeah. they just want to say hi. Take some you have a really well. clean image, I feel like. But I'm very clean. I shower every day. The dead jokes. We were filming in the actual CNA segment earlier and the dead jokes just... You didn't stop. Yeah, one every five minutes. Yeah. It was perfect. So, okay, we, we asked you about your most meaningful episode, right? But right? which mm. is the hardest one? Which is the one you... It was the most excruciatingly Ooh. painful to film. Oh, that was quite recent, actually. Not because the topic was difficult. So, the topic yeah. is about coffee. And I love coffee. We went to Indonesia to uh, visit the coffee farms. Find mm. out how they're growing it, where it's coming from, what's going on, Simple. you know. Except um, in uh, Indonesia, they don't really have things like uh, PIE, ECP, KPE, right. you know. It's just a road. Right. There's one way there, there's one way here, and it's filled with potholes. We will fly into Jakarta and then we'll look at the, the map. Oh, it's a five hour drive to wherever. Oh my God. <laughs> Which will usually end up being seven hours. Mm. And the journey is like, right. <laughs> that's your five hours, seven hours. <laughs> Physically, it was just really tiring. Right. And it was challenging because um, the locals don't speak English. So mm. whenever we have to translate, uh, something is always lost in translation. Yeah, yeah. But it's okay lah. I mean, we try, no, not but, like you know, do you in the forest, like for seven days and. Oh, so 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 like where that. we went again because you are driving so far out from the city, they don't actually have hotels in these areas. Oh, oh. because there are hardly any tourists there. Yeah. So you have like maybe an inn or some okay. like bed and breakfast kind of thing. Right. But sometimes it's just somebody's house with an extra two rooms, and that's it. You know. Right. Right. So we had to rough it out quite a bit. Yeah. What 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 do you think makes your your the content that you produce with your team like? stand out, differentiate itself from, from the rest? We ask the very capable questions. The stuff that you don't think about, like 
when was the last time you washed this cup? When they first said, let's do one about dirty water bottles. I was like, mm. yeah. we all wash it, right? It seems like common sense. Mm. <laughs> no, no, <what>? wow <laughs> I guess a lot of people don't watch that <laughs> <laughs> so it's that yeah. kind of stuff that gets right. you thinking and yeah. a lot of people say wow after I saw your show I went and washed my water bottle it's true. It's, in mm-hmm. fact the, the water bottle was one of the most watched video in yeah. recent times that was a recent one yeah. another one was we did on water heaters and how you could mm. you know if they're not installed properly it could be dangerous I was like some people came to me and said, I haven't showered for the last three days yeah. in hot water because I'm scared to turn it off. Did you feel unlocked is what I was thinking? I heard that you, you can say shit on air, but it's the context of the sentence. Like the word shit. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is just like when I'm working on my own and something messes up. No, no, no. Or just how, the, how do you fit the word shit into a proper script that's going to go on TV and but they is will there, is there shit in the story? Sure, sure. <laughs> Quote on yeah. yeah. So what, what, story yeah, what must it take? <laughs> <laughs> I was, waiting for it. I was thinking a lot of times like, this is the shit or something. Oh. Then what, what must it take? Because there are also substitutes for the word shit, ma. Right? Like yeah, poop. yeah. So we say, feces. if we're talking about poop, then we say, yeah, so there was, uh, there was shit, which is uh, our feces, you know, basically. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You would call shit shit, really? Sometimes it also depends on who the audience is. Yeah. Because if I say feces or defecated, and if I know my audience doesn't know what that word means, yeah. then huh. what's the point? So then shit, you would say shit. So like if there's a talking shit, yeah, so, so there was, there was literally, as what they said here, shit on the ground in the village. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, okay, I can okay, see okay, it. Okay, you okay. can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was just going to move this a, a little bit to something a bit more controversial. Six or seven years ago, a video came out okay. um, where I think you talked about censorship in Singapore. Ah, and okay, yes. uh, it was posted all over the forums where you kind of admitted that Singapore's media's role is not to be a watchdog in Singapore, unlike other places. Okay, first of all, I think I'm, it was taken out of context. Okay. So I did not admit that <laughs> Singapore is, you know, media is censored. Mm. Yeah, I, I didn't say that. I'm just saying that in every country, there's certain level of censorship, you know, and there will always be certain things that we uh, do or do not put on air mm. for whatever reason. So that was a session where I was speaking to some students at the university and it was just a normal sharing session. But then quickly into the session, I realized that the, the professor who had invited me actually had an agenda because the yeah. questions he kept asking were very... Pointed, pointed, in terms pointed of, yeah, and yeah. they were trying to get mm, kind of an answer yeah, out, yeah, out yeah. of us. So yeah, and I, I didn't know it had been recorded, you know. Would your answer have been different if you knew it was recorded? Because I thought you answered no, really well. Eh? I think we do censor some things. Yeah, There must be some level of censorship. Yeah. Do I feel like I cannot do a certain story here in Singapore? No. We don't do it because either I can't get um, the other side of the coin, as in the mm. other people on the flip side to give their response, which means to be a one-sided story, mm-hmm. or there are sensitivities based on religion or race. Yeah. Mm. So for obvious reasons that we don't want to, you know, cause unnecessary chaos. So yeah. But otherwise, I've never felt like I can't share my opinion on any issue. Mm. Yeah. I think with those days are gone. Mm-hmm. And people always say, oh, you don't get a call from some minister or somewhere say, hey, why you do this or take that off. You don't get it. Uh. Yeah. I mean, they can call. They will call <laughs> my boss and my boss right. will say, okay. And then he will decide. But we don't have to. It yeah. doesn't mean that just because yeah. they call, we just take it off. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. I, I think something that was interesting and I think it was in the conversation was that like one of your colleagues, I think she was um, either a senior producer or producer. She said that um, she and her fellow colleagues aren't really interested in pursuing stories where it's about holding politicians accountable. I think that was quite an interesting take because then what do you think Singapore's media's role is then if it's not about the fourth estate, estate to, to mm. be a watchdog, right? Yeah. yeah. Our role, it's unique. So I, I studied overseas and uh, when I came back to Singapore, I was like, this is not democracy. Where's this? You know? <laughs> How can Singapore be like that? It's not right. And then over time, as I started working, I started to understand why Singapore is the way it is. We are very unique. If we adopt the uh, American style of democracy here, we'll mm. be in big trouble. I mean, first of all, should anyone at any time be able to say whatever they want for whatever mm. reason? No, right? We've mm. seen how it, it causes in chaos fact, over America there America's right? style of democracy is giving America problems as well. Yeah. So do we go after people? Uh, isn't, I mean, we will investigate if there's an issue. If politicians are held accountable for whatever reason, it's not like we don't cover it. Mm. We will cover it. We will mm. ask the questions. But is it my job to spend my time saying, oh, why did he say that? And what is going on there? Yeah. Right. No, I mean, that's not my, that's not the priority of the media here. I think our job is to, to find out what's going on in the world, keep people informed and, you know, help mm. you stay informed. Yeah. Being a guy that's so exposed to many of the things around the world and being able to, through your show, right, go deep mm. dives with many, many issues that society is facing, what are you most concerned about for your children that will inherit this world? 
Wow, that's like a big question. The challenges in the future are somewhat uncertain. So we know AI is here and it's going to change a lot of things. I don't know what are the jobs of the future. When my kids are ready to work, I don't even know what kind of jobs they would have. So I think our challenge in Singapore especially is that we're not very outgoing because at the end of the day, there'll be challenges and issues to face and we'll probably have the tools to fix it with AI, but how do we bridge that gap? We are very good at following the instruction manual. We're not so good when there's no instruction manual. Okay. Mm. This is you what, what keeps I mean? you up at night? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is this is my concern that I think in Singapore yeah. we have such great minds, but we can only work a certain way. So our education system is very rigorous, teach you how to do all these things, solve very challenging problems. But the moment I take away certain elements of it, then you don't know how mm, to yeah. be flexible and to adapt. Mm. Or even why you learned it in the first place. Well, yeah. mm. Like our driving test. Okay. <laughs> I just very sore about it. Full circle. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think we can solve that though? Experiential learning. Try. For one, don't be afraid to fail. My story is that I never did well in school. Academically, I was never, you know, too smart. After PSLE, I went to the normal stream. I got back to Express in Sec 2. Oh, okay. But I still was always like bottom five in the class. And then I went to JC. I repeated my first year. So I'm not saying you should do that, but I learned a lot from those experiences. And I think it shaped me, you know, in that mm. sense. So the failures, we grow a lot. Mm. Ask any entrepreneur if they haven't failed before, you know, they yeah. won't be where they are today. Having done journalism for such a long time and being so experienced, do you have like a core piece of advice for like aspiring journalists? Oh yeah, sure. Be a, be capo, be a busy body. You know, you got to be asking questions about anything and everything. If you are always uh, curious to find out the, like the who, what, where, when, why, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, that's a good start. And then the other bit is writing. We forget that, but all the stuff I do starts from a good script, which mm. is pen on paper or rather typed, you know, but. Depends <laughs> <laughs> on your handwriting. <laughs> yeah. But essentially it's, you got to start there. And writing is something we tend to neglect quite a bit nowadays. Okay. Are you still friends with Suzanne Zhang? <laughs> 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 That's the memory. Like yes. if I think of Stephen Chia, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it's not talking point for me. It's I need like, to know her. Yeah. It's okay. It's many, like, I'm you... sure that was the reason many guys woke hey, up in the morning yeah. to watch I was TV. Invo- I was very interested in the current life. affairs at yeah. 6 a.m. in the right. morning. Right. <laughs> the sexual awakening of many secondary school boys. Hey, come on, don't put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. pretend yeah. I didn't hear that. I read on the on your media club profile that <laughs> yeah. uh, they very okay. proudly like say like oh uh, Stephen Chia has interviewed many celebrities including uh, Ian McKellen, <laughs> Lady, oh. Gaga. Lady Gaga, and for some reason yeah. Kevin Spacey. I think they should take that out. <laughs> but, like, Yo, that's a huge flex. Well, I mean, regardless of what they've done in their personal life, you know, in a way, I yeah, have interviewed Kevin Spacey. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, so they, like, yeah. I think in, in the morning show there used to be a lot of celebrities coming to town. Ah, and, yeah. You know, uh, oh. that was it was a lifestyle show kind yes, of. Yes, yeah. So we had the opportunity. But actually, I wrote that profile myself so I, I think <laughs> oh, so you, you, you didn't want to take out Kevin Spacey no, 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 no. the brain no, no, no. I haven't updated it in a long time so. <laughs> it's not like Stephen Google is that every day to like see what's on <laughs> no, no, me, maybe I better go update <laughs> the phone. I'd be very proud right if like 10 days from now I check and then there's no more Kevin Spacey it was it because, because of you maybe because of you yeah. well, he doesn't yeah. run the website la. you need to submit <laughs> <laughs> so much rate thing. unless of course he also runs the website yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like East Channel News Asia there you go so out of all of them, like who do you, who's the most memorable guest that you think you had? Like internationally, name oh, brand kind oh, of stuff. Uh, probably, probably Lady Gaga because she actually is quite a unique person. <laughs> I mean, again, this was so many years ago. She was uh, in her heyday and I remember interviewing her one-on-one and I was asking her certain questions and her answers were just like totally... Like you don't know how to yeah. have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, she was really in her own world. Like a bit drunk like that. Yeah, so, so that part was a bit unusual because yeah, yeah you know what I mean yeah, so yeah. I mean, you couldn't read her poker face right yeah 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 you learn fast. I have a bad yeah. romance with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, you know, quit while you're here. Don't be a monster. Okay, okay. Oh. Compose. Compose. Yeah. So after that, you're at bad blood. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my yeah. one entry. That's yeah. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. No. Oh, damn. What a true oh. eh? What a true <laughs> yeah. What's that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. And so thank you to Steven for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks, thank guys. You. Also, want to shout out to our community members for submitting your questions. If you haven't yet joined, the link is down below. Do it. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you're quite daddy, lah. You know that, lah, right? I'm... <laughs> That's the best much, response you could have given. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the way me and my daddy, you know? Prof- <laughs>